So I managed to make a lot of women really, really angry. I decided to give TikTok a go. So I posted a video on there and I didn't realize the YouTube privilege I had in that you guys know me, the algorithm serves my videos to people it knows are going to like my content, but I'm an unknown entity on TikTok. And so the algorithm just pushed it out to everybody and sort of found which demographic got the biggest emotional response because that's how these social media algorithms work. And it turned out that the video I posted didn't really resonate in a big emotional way with men. It resonated with women. And so I got a lot of responses. I actually found all the women responding to my video very telling about female psychology and about how they respond to men's issues in general. But before we get to the responses, let me just play for you the video that I posted. So a lot of guys, they want to know why they're getting so bored of having sex with their girlfriends. They wonder, is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with our relationship? I still love her. I still find her, you know, sexually attractive, but she just doesn't interest me anymore. What's going on? Is there something wrong? No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Actually, it's something completely natural. It's biological. It's called the Coolidge effect. And this is something that affects the males of all of these different species. So to research this, they put one male rat in a box with five female rats and he mated with them until he was absolutely bored. And the only thing that would re-stimulate his interest was when they added a brand new female rat into the box and then suddenly he was ready to go again. When they did it with sheep, they found that the ram was able to climax so much quicker when it was with a brand new female. And even doing this research on human men, they found that when they were exposed to like pornography, their arousal level was just going down and down and down and down. But when the researchers offered like a huge hit of novelty, like some new sexual act, some new girl, there was like a big spike of interest. And so you think, well, why is this? Why is male sexuality so wired to novelty? Well, think of it from this perspective. Evolutionarily, the reason that we have sexuality is because we want to pass on our genes to the next generation. Now, for men, sometimes that's going to look like you know, marrying one woman, having a few children, providing for them, making sure they're happy and they're healthy and they make it to adulthood. But it's also viable, at least in a pure numbers game perspective, to just have sex with lots of different women, to get lots of different preg women pregnant. You don't provide for them, but you hope that enough of them survive. And so you can see that our brains have actually been neurologically wired to respond to novelty. When we see a woman that we haven't had sex with yet, we haven't gotten her pregnant yet, it's like, oh yes, what a great opportunity. This is when I'm going to be able to pass on my genes. That's it. That's all the video is. I mean, you guys have heard me talk about the Coolidge effect on this channel before, but there's nothing in that that's groundbreaking or should be remotely controversial. This is a well-documented biological phenomenon. It's not my theory. This is thoroughly researched evolutionary psychology. What I spoke about in that video is scientific fact. But do you want to guess now, how did women respond to this video? Were they like, oh, wow, that's so fascinating. I'm always excited to learn new things. Or man, I really appreciate getting this new insight into the male perspective. This is such a great opportunity for me to learn, to improve myself, to grow in my understanding. If you sincerely thought that I was going to get a calm, rational, respectful response from the women of TikTok, then I am sorry to disappoint you. The responses were awful. Ladies, you really made yourself look bad on this one. But before we get to the painful response that my video received, let's first talk about something positive. Let's talk about the fantastic sponsor of today's video, T. Hanley. If you're like me and you walk into some beauty store and you're thinking, I've got to buy some stuff to fix my skin, I need to create a skincare routine for myself, you would have no idea which products are good, where to start, how much to buy. That actually applies to a lot of men. There are so many guys out there who want to look attractive, who want to have good skin, but they just don't know what to do. Luckily for us, we don't have to figure it out because T. Chanley has done the hard work for us. They had a bunch of very smart people figure out what the male skin needs and then create a series of amazing products to meet those needs. Their starter pack comes with four different creams. You've got your daily face wash, but you've also got your AM cream, your PM cream. You've got your exfoliating scrub. Use this one twice a week. How do I know that you use it twice? a week. How do you know how much to use? Well, like I said, they've made it easy for men. Each box comes with this instruction card, tells you how much to use, when to apply it. Their products are affordable, high quality. They require minimum effort from you. And in the end, you get fantastic skin. To make things even easier, if you live inside the United States, they will ship it to your door directly for free. I mean, check out all of these five-star reviews from their website. 
Great stuff. Good. Fantastic. I've received a lot of compliments on my skin since using. Great. Highly recommended. Fellas, we've got to take care of our skin and Tiege Handley is the answer. And because they're sponsoring this video, they're offering my audience members a fantastic deal. When you click on the link in the description box below, not only are you going to get the starter pack at an amazing price, just $30, but they're going to throw in a free gift as well. Thank you, Tiege Handley, for making me look good. Now, let's get back to the women who responded to my TikTok video who made themselves look bad. Most of the responses came in one of three different forms. The first one is, of course, to ignore what it is that I have said and instead just shame me personally. Let me guess, you're still single. Thank you so much for making these videos. It makes it so much easier to refrain from interacting romantically with men. Those studies were produced by a man. Was it an unbiased study? Lol. All about men, isn't it? Do you ever stop to wonder how many O's your female partner had with you? Hey Shallow, do you get bored and tired of your kids or your mum called a love bond? He's defo single, especially when he ignores the fact that most female animals kill the male after having sex because they're useless. And there's a laughing emoji after that one because, you know, killing men, that's, that's funny. 20 people upvoted that last comment. I mean, that makes you think, doesn't it? 20 people read that comment that said that in most species, women kill the male after sex and were like, yes, I'm endorsing that. The biological ignorance is just astounding. They got to watch more David Attenborough. But unfortunately, ladies, your comments of shame do not sway me. I still 100% stand behind my video as an accurate representation of the science. For the record, I'm not single. I am capable of pleasuring my partner. I'm not bored of my mom or of my daughter. Thank you, by the way, for bringing my child into this. Super classy. But if shaming doesn't work, then what's the next tactic they're going to move on to? Of course, the straw man. Why did I make this video explaining the Coolidge effect? I mean, obviously the sensible thing would be to ask me, but that's going to take a certain amount of time. It's a lot quicker to just assume my intentions. It's like you're trying to explain why you have to cheat on your girlfriend. Good excuse. This sounds like the reason husbands used to cheat. And every cheater everywhere is going to save this for proof that they couldn't help themselves. Thank God these women are here to tell me what my motives were because I had no idea that I was trying to justify infidelity. I was under the impression I was trying to make men feel less ashamed about their own sexuality to make them aware of the biological instincts that are operating inside them so that they can make smarter choices. Perhaps I was also just hanging out for some shred of hope that in explaining this, we might get some more empathy from women about what men go through, what men give up with regards to monogamy. If some women did come across my video, I guess I hoped that it might give them some insight, perhaps even some compassion. Wow, I didn't realize that men had such strong instincts that ran in direct contradiction to our culture of monogamy. That must be difficult to deal with. I'm really glad I'm aware of that. What a pipe dream. That empathy was nowhere to be found. There are so many reasons to talk about this, but these women could only see a justification for cheating as though because the science could be used as a justification for cheating. What, we shouldn't talk about it? We should just ban all scientific research? That's probably why biology and evolutionary psychology seem to be controversial topics. It's not because there's anything wrong with the science, because it doesn't fit with the cultural narratives of the day. It's a terrifying anti-science time to be alive. But in fairness, I did notice there are a couple of guys or maybe high quality women who stood up for me. He's literally just explaining evolutionary science. He said nothing about cheating. How do you interpret that from the video? He's not even talking about cheating. He's exposing male evolutionary psychology. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. But neither of those types of responses is actually that interesting. That's quite entertaining, but it's not the reason why I wanted to make this video. Oh, some shaming, some straw man. I mean, of course, that was to be expected. But the final response, which was by far the most common response I received, is the most telling in terms of female psychology. I think the implications are the most interesting to explore. And so I'm going to ask you to guess what it was. What was the most common response that we got from women? Think about this from your own life, your own experiences. When you're talking about men, when you're talking about men's issues, how do women typically respond? I'm actually going to be disappointed in you if you can't guess this right. You clearly need to watch more of my channel. There's no excuse for not guessing this correctly. Think about it. Think about your own life. When you try and talk about yourself, what you're going through, what you're struggling with, when you try and talk about men and men's issues, how do women respond? Okay, if you guessed that she makes it about herself, then you guessed correctly. That's what women do. It's like they're psychologically incapable of hearing about men's struggle without making it about themselves. I just wanted to inform you it's 100% the same for the ladies. 
It doesn't happen only to men, it happens to everyone. Um, I think some women get bored with their boyfriends too. Can you explain that? I'm a woman with a male mentality. I get bored with men, so I always need a new one. I'm a female and feel the same. I don't know, I'm a girl, I get bored too. Girls get bored too. I'm a woman and feel the same way, so can you explain that? Lol. This explains why I feel this way with guys. And these final two are my favorites. Thank you. Like, why do men think women don't experience the same feelings that they do? And lol, it's always only men who have biology. I'll stop there, but if you go to the original TikTok and scroll down, you'll see there are clones of those comments all throughout it. It's so common, and honestly, women, I think that this is really embarrassing for you. Here we are trying to have a conversation about men, about an experience that men are going through, and women can't handle it. They're just like, yes, we have that too, or what about how this impacts women? Sometimes, Sometimes it seems as though women are incapable of understanding something unless it directly relates to them. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, ladies, but no, you don't get to be a part of this one. Male sexuality is different to female sexuality. I'm not going to claim that I know what it's like to be a woman or to have your sexuality, but I know for damn sure that you have no idea what it's like to be a man with our experience. What a ridiculous statement for a woman to make to say, well, I find multiple men attractive, or I once got bored in a relationship, I guess I'm just like a man, or there's no differences between men and women. The ignorance. You're wrong. You have no idea. You have no conception of how intense male sexuality is. The Coolidge effect does not affect women the same as men, and yes, there have been lots of scientific studies to confirm this. Men desire sexual novelty to a much greater degree than women do. I'll put a link to a study down below if you want to read it for yourself. But it's just common sense. After a woman is pregnant, it doesn't make any sense for her to have instincts to sleep with other men. She's already growing a child inside her, but for a man it's different. Once he's got a girl pregnant, his sperm production doesn't freeze for nine months until she's ready to go again. He has really strong biological incentives in his body to reproduce, to have sex with more women, to get more women pregnant, to pass on his genes. And no, once again, this is not a justification for infidelity. So yes, while women might get bored in relationships and find multiple men attractive, that's not because of the Coolidge effect. This is something that affects men. The reason why you're getting bored is because of something different. I mean, I could make a whole nother video about all the reasons why women cheat. They're emotionally unfulfilled, they're not satisfied by their current man's masculinity, they're hypergamous, they want to trade up, they want a monkey branch, they're traumatized, and so they need the distraction and drama of constantly changing partners. I mean, these are all absolutely fascinating reasons why women commit infidelity, but it's not the same. The Coolidge effect relates to male sexuality, and so I have to turn the mirror back on you women. What on earth is so threatening about men having something of their own? It's not even anything good. Most guys don't want to have these instincts. Once they settle down with a partner, they'd probably quite happily push some magic button that gave them absolute sexual contentment within that monogamous partnership. They're cursed by their instincts, by their biology, which gives them this wandering eye. We don't want it. Why on earth do you want it? The fact that the Coolidge effect affects men is not a reason for women to envy us. The conclusions I reach from like these experiences of reading all these comments are really pretty dire. And I know that this might sound extreme, but I think for a lot of women that their sense of entitlement has just gone so far that it actually doesn't even occur to them that men could be having some unique, different experience because culturally they're so used to ignoring men. They're so used to dismissing all of their issues, all of their emotions. And even if a man does complain about something, he's just shut down instantly. Like, you don't have a right to complain, you privileged patriarch. Like, women, we've got the issues. We've got the problems. It's actually really convenient because when you pretend that men aren't special, amazing, unique creatures with their own experiences and their own problems. It's so much easier to just exploit them for your own benefit. I don't know. I just found the whole thing really disappointing. Women, you need to do better than this. This inability to allow men to have their own experiences, to discuss their own problems without you jumping in on the conversation and hijacking it really needs to change. It's not good enough. And I think that it's especially disappointing because women are meant to be the compassionate nurturing ones. But after however many decades of culturally entrenched victimhood that we've had, where women have been getting the message over and over and over again that only their pain matters, only their experience counts for anything, we end up with this current generation of women who just can't seem to see outside their own experience and make room for men. Think about how this manifests. Like, Think of two different situations. You've got a bunch of male and female friends standing around in a bar talking about issues. 
And if one of the women starts talking about her experiences as a woman and all the difficulties that women are going through at the moment, most of the men just sit there politely, smile, nod, ask questions, offer support. I don't believe that that's because men are particularly compassionate or any more so than women. I think it's because of the intense cultural pressure that have forced men, hey, get outside of your own head, start focusing on women, listen to other people's experiences. That's the message. We've taken it on. But there's absolutely no reciprocity. And you'll notice this if in that same situation, one of the men starts talking about his experiences and connects it to the greater experience of men in society, men's collective problems. Do the women stand there silently, nodding respectfully, offering support? Or do they jump in and argue, say, that's not a problem? Or women deal with that too. What are you complaining about? That needs to change. Women. You've got to learn to be comfortable with men having their own space. And if you're unable to grant that to men, if you need to hijack every single conversation and make it about you and your gender, then you're actually the definition of a sexist. It's not good enough. It's time to do better. I don't think I really intended for that video to turn as dark as it ended up being. <laughs> I guess I just get a bit depressed sometimes making these videos. And now I'm going to talk to you about my latest Patreon video, which is actually the perfect follow on from this in, in two ways, because the topic of the video was why is there an increase in male bitterness? That was the intention behind the video. But as I spoke in that video, I kind of hijacked it and used it for my own therapeutic purposes and began this whole meta discussion about my channel and where I fit in the space and what I'm trying to achieve. Kind of like the video you've just watched, it sort of went off the rails, and <laughs> lost its original purpose a little bit. But hey, maybe that's something you'd be interested in watching. If you want to see me a bit unscripted, a bit emotional, a bit ranting, then come on over to Patreon, check out the latest video. You'll love it.